and provide that type of effect over 400 years, what type of psychological damage would it do? See, a lot of times, and I, I understand if people listen, a lot of times, we don't like to go back. We don't like to hear. We like to forget. The problem with forgetting is that the problem haven't been solved. And usually if you overlook a problem and you study, go through history and you study forget it, it rises up again until you address that problem. I'm one that believes that, 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 and that also that the uh, strong, stronger American people, that problems should be addressed. And a businessman or uh, any type of man knows that when he have a problem, that that problem don't go away. They're going to have to face that problem. They're going to have to address that problem. In America, the, uh, a lot of us, uh, both Caucasian, black, haven't had the strength, haven't had the courage to come back and address that problem, to clear that problem up, to undo the damage that had been done through centuries of time and know it to be done, but yet still go back and would like to blame it on the people inferiority would like to say that these people are born this way. No matter what, these people are born this way without telling them their true history, without giving them an identity of what was done to them. Hmm, interesting. Of course, you may agree or disagree. We want to hear from you. Call us now, 428-3671. Now, that, but that brings up my next question. Um, I mean, do we actually blame anyone? I mean, is there, is there anyone to blame for this? Well, I don't really say that it's, uh, it, it's somebody to, naturally it's somebody to blame, but uh, whoever done it is to blame. But I rather... I'm saying, I mean, do, do, do the Caucasian people of today carry the blame of what their foreparents did? Because, uh, well, you know, well, I mean, naturally, I'm uh, uh, believing in this. If I commit a crime, then I'm responsible for that, that crime. And then we have to realize this, that there was Caucasian people on both sides. We, I, I'm, I'm not one to say that we can condemn a whole race when there were people on the other side of that race that helped actually fought for African American freedom. Everybody was not guilty of doing. There was, uh, 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 there was quite a few that was guilty of doing it, but the, everybody was not guilty of doing it. But naturally, the, the Caucasian people today is not responsible for uh, what happened back then. They are not to blame for back then. But as American citizens, as American citizens, all of us is responsible to correct a problem, that, that especially if these are American people. Right now you have people that are, that are starving in nations. American people come to the aid. Right now you had a, a starvation and they had this thing going across America to feed the hunger. People that were concerned about the good life in America, they took hold. Anytime there's some kind of, if a war break out now, people that feel responsible to this country, they take, uh, uh, take part in that. So I'm saying as American people, all people, that we should be uh, uh, way more responsible for the damage that has been done over 400 years, and we should address that problem and find out the, uh, uh, the effect of that problem. So all of us have the responsibility to correct the problem. So, um, are, are you saying that, I mean, what percentage of, of African Americans are, were affected? Uh, I mean, are you saying that we all was affected, or is it part of us, a small majority, a great, major, a great majority, a small minority? Or? Uh, uh, I would have to give it about 99 to 100 percent was affected, to one degree or another. Some was not affected as, as um, as worse as others. Now, people listen, they say, well, I don't know what he's talking about. I wasn't affected. Then, you know, I ask the question, if you're not affected, then you should know another language besides European language. The language we speak is English. We should know another language, even if we can't speak it. Just like a Chinese may can speak English, may not know his language, but he know that his language is Chinese. What was our language? What was our tongue? What was our religion? What was our name? Why does African Americans, if we haven't been affected, why does we carry the same thing that the other nationality carry? And we are not Englishmen. We are not Europeans. Why do we have Europe? This is something that we should think about because this is a, is a living evidence that we was affected. If we weren't affected, we'd be having our own name. We'd be having our own language. We'd be having our own culture. Give us, give us another example. Um, uh, uh, 
where it's a, a lot of examples. Uh, one of the uh, major examples that I would like to, uh, to get on that I think is one of the major problems also, and that is the example that African-Americans in this country have not taken on the responsibility yet to be free the way that we are and not shoulder the responsibility of other African-American citizens. It's another living proof that something had to happen. What am I saying? I'm saying that if you watch people, right now Vietnam people, Vietnamese people, they're down there in the Galveston, they're in the Gulf. Right now they're, they're very industrious. Got here, some of them wasn't on welfare, not even for a good month or so before they start creating their own businesses, creating a lifestyle for themselves. Korean people is doing the same. A lot of other people, national people, they come over here and they get advantages way quicker. They, they work way harder. Uh, to, uh, 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 to gain some independence. Our problem has been one problem that where we have inherited through the years of letting other people take care of our concerns before we take care of our own concerns. And that is a bad inherited feeling. To have, when business is closed in our community, the majority of them have to be reopened by somebody else. Because we have a feeling that somebody else has to take care of us. Right now, when we have problems, the first thing that African-American people do, they cry to Reagan. They say, Reagan, you know, well, Reagan ain't doing this and Reagan ain't doing this. We have not yet learned as a people to start showing our responsibility. And if we trace that back, we'll see why. At 400 years, you're not even allowed to be a father not allowed to even take the responsibility of raising your own children, a responsibility to roll your voice in your own household for leadership, for direction. All those directions was taken away, especially from the African-American man. When those directions was taken away, what did it leave, what, what, did, it, uh, what did it give him? For years, you know, uh, who provided the food? The other people provided the food for him. Who provided the clothes for him? Other people provided the clothes for him. And through years, after even getting no, uh, been let go, we have inherited one of the baddest habits in the world, and that is letting other people take care of our concerns instead of taking care of our own concerns. And another thing is to take our share of responsibility in this country. What is our share? Is our share just to have jobs? Or should we have a share of creating jobs? What is our share? If we want Reagan to say, well, Reagan is not producing no jobs, how many jobs are we as African Americans producing for our own children first? Shouldn't we go to Reagan and say, well, look, we have produced uh, two million jobs. We need some assistance in helping to provide other jobs. That would be the other approach. Instead of having the syndrome approach of that one man should take care of all of us. And, and that same thought, it is just a habit that we have inherited, and that that habit is the habit that we have to break before we can ever see the real freedom. Freedom only means responsibility. If we have not taken responsibility for our own life, then we haven't yet been made free yet. People that is free, you let a bird go free, you used to have it in a cage. When you let it go free, it is going to start building its own nest. It's going to start having its own family. It's not going to wait on you to come back bringing no more bread, no more seeds. It's going to take <laughs> up its own responsibility. So when it let go, it goes and starts building its own foundation, its own environment for itself. Same way with the ant or anything else that's in captivity. Once you let it go, it starts being independent again. And African Americans have to realize that they have been free, have to start thinking they have been free, putting our children that they are free, and we have to start showing responsibility. The tale that you're free is only to say, are we carrying our responsibility as a people, as other people is carrying in this country? And you're saying no. I am saying we are not, not at this time. At this we time. are not. Because, well, I'm saying that a lot of things we're doing, and don't get me wrong, I'm not giving the picture. I'm not saying that African Americans are lazy. I'm not saying that they are shifting. I'm saying that we are very industrious, but we are very industrious in working and helping other people. We are very industrious in supporting other people before we support ourselves. Some of the greatest geniuses in the world are among African Americans, but they use all that genius to go and support other people. They'll graduate from college and we will never see them in our neighborhood again. 
They're graduating from Harvard, and we'll never see them in our neighborhood again. Why well, have all those skills, all those, why haven't they gotten all that knowledge and their resources? Come back and use those knowledge and resources to uplift their community. And that's the responsibility that we have to have. I'm saying uh, plainly what we have got into is bad habits that we have inherited from slavery. And we have to drop those habits and learn that it's our responsibility to take care of our own situation first and not anybody else's. Hmm. Interesting. Of course, you may agree or disagree. We want to hear from you. Call us at 428-3671. If you just tuned in, you're viewing Lay It on the Line. I'm your host, Hassan Kareem. This is my guest, Kareem Muhammad, and we're talking on the psychological effects and cause and effect of slavery. Now, um, you mentioned the deteriorating uh, the uh, family life, and you also mentioned that for 400 years the men were un un unable to roar their authority in the house. How do you how do you relate uh, the effects of slavery with the st alarming statistic rate that we have right now. I mean, for the, the black families deteriorating, the teenage pregnancy on the rise, the school dropouts, you know, all of these things like that. Okay, I think there's some effects, but we also have to remember that this is America, and uh, uh, it's freedom of religion, freedom of direction, and uh, the majority thing that's what's going on here is freedom to destroy the, the, to destroy your own self. And um, what um, the point I would like to make is that we have to understand what is going on, what, what is America uh, is made of for as a direction, for the moral direction for us, that the individual have to, that's his responsibility to, to get moral direction. America, you can't go into schools and say, and look up moral out there. So moral direction is not only hurting African-American families, it's hurting Caucasian families, it's hurting everybody in the system unless they grab on to a, 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 a strong uh, religion, a strong uh, a culture that have a base, a moral base into it. But also we have to say, we have to agree that some of those effects did come from slavery. That a man is, um, uh, that haven't been allowed for so long to take care of his family, um, to not have that responsibility. What was the role? We should ask ourselves, what was the role of African American man? It was a stud. It was simply a breeder. The same as a bull, same as a horse, the same as a thoroughbred to get, uh, let me get the, is, is he strong? Well, let me get the best livestock. And if you go to our community, you'll see that atmosphere. You'll see that atmosphere from them trained to look uh, 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 look at that type of individual. Uh, even our direction for what we want for the husband and wife, then they look at him, does he look good? They ain't asking if you're a good provider, if you're a good family. Oh, he looked good. And we're going to we're come right back to that. We're going to take a call. Good evening. You're on the air. Lay it on the line. Yeah, this is Fred Stein. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. He's fresh. He's giving a good approach. He tells what is honest and good. And there are a few people like him. And I want to learn from him 